Hey Church, welcome to our online gathering today. We're so glad to have you with us. Whether you are joining from isolation or whether you're in a home gathering today, we just want to say welcome. We're so excited for you to be with us today. We have a great gathering planned and uh, we're going to get to that in just a moment. But just before we do, I wanted to remind you about one thing and that is uh, the date, the 30th of January. You won't want to miss. That's going to be our anointing service at our Tweed building and that's for all of our location to be back together again. It's going to be an amazing day. It's always a fantastic time of worship and prayer and anointing. It's a great time of refreshing and refilling and you won't want to miss it. It's the 30th of January and we'll all be back together again and talk a little bit more about why that's going to happen. We're going to hear just quickly from our pastors Lokantara who are currently away on sabbatical but they wanted to send a little update through. So why don't we throw to them now. Hey everyone, here we are live from our motorhome. Tara is living her best life. <laughs> <laughs> we're off the grid right now. <laughs> and uh, we're. All the kids laughing at me. <laughs> we're camping on the beach and it's been the most amazing time. But we just wanted to shoot this quick video to say we miss you. Yes. We love you guys heaps and uh, we can't wait to be back with you. We've heard about the different things that are going on up there with COVID and yeah. home gatherings happening two weeks in a row. But January 30th, we are so pumped that the border is coming down Come and we are getting on. together for our anointing service. So we can't wait to be back with you yeah. and uh, just seeing what God's going to do in 2022 is going to be amazing. So love you heaps, guys, and we'll see you soon. Love you, miss you all, and we are so excited to hang out January 30th. We will see you then. Can't Yay. wait. Awesome. Thanks so much, Lock and Tara. We miss you lots and we can't wait to have you back again. But we're going to jump into the rest of our gathering today. So before we do, why don't we pray, Father? We love you so much and we're so excited for what you want to do in our gathering today. As we come into a time of worship now, Lord, we pray that our offering to you would be sweet, that you would delight in the worship that we bring you and that our fellowship together would be pleasing in your sight. So we love you, Lord, and we give you all our worship and our praise today. In Jesus' name, amen. Never be more loved than I am right now. Wasn't holding you up, so there's nothing I can do to let you down. It doesn't take a trophy to make you proud. I'll never be more loved than I am right now. Yeah. 
was a wretch. I remember who I was. I was lost. I was blind. I was running out of time. And sin separated. The bridge was far too wide. But from the far side
Hey church, welcome to the online service today. My name is Stacey, bringing you the ISO edition of Elevation Service. So I get the privilege of bringing the word of God for us for the next few moments. And as you can see over my shoulder, I have my beautiful dog, Geordie here, who is my support um, during this time of ISO. So in all seriousness, I know this has been quite a tough and troubling time for a lot of us. Um, some of us have had COVID, some of us have been in isolation because of it. Um, and so I just want to encourage you today. What encouraged me this morning was coming to the word of God. And I know it sounds cliche, of course, the pastor, of course, the preacher is going to say that, but I found myself in a moment of just inner turmoil. And, you know, when I opened up the scriptures this morning, I just found such peace and solace in the fact that God speaks into our situation and he is in control and um, that his word endures for all time. And so I encourage you in this time when you feel like your soul or your heart is just that, is just an inner turmoil to turn to God because I promise you, you will not regret it and you'll find the peace um, that you need for this time. So before we dive into the word, let me just pause and take a moment to pray for us. Father, we thank you that technology affords us the opportunity to still gather, even just virtually, to still gather this morning and to worship you as a community um, and to receive of your word. And so I just pray that in the next few moments, not only would you speak to people through this word, but more than that, Holy Spirit, that you would comfort people's hearts by your wonderful presence. We say, come Holy Spirit. We need you. Thank you that you are the God of all the ages, that you are more than enough for us, and that with a simple word, you are able to still the storms that rage on the inside of our hearts. So again, we pray, come Holy Spirit. Have your way in us and through us this day and speak to us now, we pray in your most holy name. Amen. Well, thankfully, Pastor Locke and Tara, they are on a well-deserved sabbatical enjoying some time off. So I'm going to dive into the word for us today. Um, we've kicked off a new series called The Deeply Formed Life. And that's based on a book from a pastor named Rich Velotis, is how I think you pronounce it. Um, and it's a wonderful book, so I encourage you to check the book out. But we had Matt Flegler kick the series off for us by talking about contemplative rhythms. So today I am chatting through the second um, part of the series which is interior examination. So you might be wondering, why would we talk about that? And I'm so excited you asked because we are going to jump into that today. So as you know, we regularly service things in our lives, in our worlds, in our homes that are important to us, right? We get our cars serviced regularly. We service um, our dogs by taking them to the vets. This one's joining me Today, as you can see, she is completely excited about the Word of God today. Um, we service our electrical appliances. We go to um, get our skin checked, right? We service our skin and make sure that there is no um, cancers or things or moles forming that look a bit strange, right? So we service these things um, in our worlds that are important to us. And so when it comes to our souls and our hearts and our inner being, isn't it important for us to service those as well? And so that's what self-examination is. Self-examination is basically servicing your soul. Um, and why would we do that? What's the point of self-examination? Well, um, just briefly, number one, self-examination leads to Christian formation. So when we look inward and we examine our soul, it actually leads us to become more like Christ. And as we become more like Christ, we're able to better reflect Christ in the world. So if we didn't ever look inward, if we didn't ever examine our soul and service our soul and see what was happening on the insides, then we're not actually giving ourselves opportunity to become more like Jesus. So the first thing that self-examination does for us is that it leads us to become more like Jesus. The second thing self-examination leads to is greater freedom. I don't know if you have heard of Juneteenth. I'm sure if you have social media or, or anyone abroad, you've probably heard of the term Juneteenth. So I'm going to let Britannica um, explain to us what Juneteenth is. It says this. In 1863, during the American Civil War, President Abraham Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation, which declared more than three million slaves living in the Confederate States to be free. More than two years would pass, however, before the news reached African-Americans living in Texas. 
It was not until Union soldiers arrived in Galveston, Texas on June 19, 1865, that the state's residents finally learned that slavery had been abolished. The former slaves immediately began to celebrate with prayer, feasting, song, and dance. And a century and a half later, people in cities and towns across the U.S. continue to celebrate the occasion. So what we see here in the example of Juneteenth is that there was a declaration made that the slaves were free. However, they didn't actually begin to walk in that freedom until about two years after the declaration. And how this applies to us as we talk about interior examination and self-examination looking at the soul is that Christ has purchased our freedom already. He did that on the cross when he died for our sins and he paid the penalty that we owed to God and our debt was cleared. So we have freedom, but through self-examination, we actually begin to walk in that freedom more and more and more. Galatians chapter 5 verse 1, Eugene Peterson paraphrases this verse as he says this, Christ has set us free to live a free life. So take your stand and never again let anyone put a harness of slavery on you. Now that sounds kind of extreme, but what happens when we examine our inner interior beings is that we actually allow ourselves to walk in greater freedoms that we didn't even know were already made available to us through Christ. And so Self-examination leads to Christ-likeness, but it also leads to greater freedom. That Christ has purchased our freedom, but through examining our soul, we get to walk in that freedom in a greater measure. And the third thing self-examination leads to is it leads us to God. It leads us to prayer, to dependence on God, to recognize, oh my giddy aunt, I am a sinner. I'm broken. There are things in my life that I don't like when I look inside of myself. Therefore, I need God. I need God to come and to heal those broken places. And so there is no harm done in self-examination. It doesn't lead us to look inward. It just allows us to partner with the Holy Spirit to search our souls and to have God come and heal our broken places, that we would look more like Christ that we would walk in greater freedom, and that we would fully depend on God. Um, in the book that I mentioned, the book that this series is based on, called A, Deeper, A Deeply Formed Life by Rich Velotis, he says this about self-examination. He says, Christ goes with us as we dare to engage in sincere confrontation with ourselves. Because God loves us unconditionally, along with our dark sides, we don't need to dodge ourselves. In the light of this love, the pain of self-knowledge can be at the same time the beginning of our healing. So I know you're all amped for this journey, right? You're all excited. You can't wait for confrontation. We all love it, especially when it comes to confrontation with ourselves. So let's dig in and dive into this journey. And I want to chat through three things as a tool, three questions that we can ask on this journey of self-examination. Uh, the first question is this, um, what's the fruit? So as we go on this journey of self-examination, let's ask ourselves, what's the fruit? What are the things that are popping up on the surface of our lives that might require further examination? Um, I went to the skin cancer place to just get my skin checked with my boyfriend a couple of months ago. And as we were there, you know, we had appointments that were beside each other and so I went in and the guy looked at my skin and he was very pleased he's like you've got good skin I, I said thank you I know I have good skin and I walked out within 10 minutes right I just I just have that type of skin thankfully that I don't get burned very easily and so he was he was happy about my skin my boyfriend walked in after me and he was in there for at least 30 minutes and he just has that type of skin that requires further examination there are things like moles and things on his skin that the doctor really wanted to have a deeper look at. And so we ended up having a little biopsy and that went away to be tested. Now, I share this story to say this with you. Uh, there are things that pop up in our lives, that pop up onto the surface of our lives that require deeper examination. They require a more fuller investigation. And so I want you to ask yourself, what are some of those things recently in your life that have cropped up to the surface um, that should require a little bit further investigation. Those are the fruits, the things that are coming to the surface of our lives. 
So let me give you a few example, a few examples of those actions, thoughts, feelings, or behaviors that might be popping up that need further investigation. Um, it could be things that the Bible calls sin. So it could be an addiction, an addiction to alcohol or an addiction to pornography or an addiction to exercise or an addiction to food or an addiction to social media. You know, the Bible teaches that we shouldn't be enslaved to anything because Christ has purchased our freedom. And so maybe some of the fruit that's popping up in the surface of your life is that you're addicted to something. You're overly dependent and reliant on a substance or on another person or on your work. So maybe that is one of the fruit that could pop up on the surface of your life. Maybe it's something like um, outbursts of anger or rage that recently you've noticed that, hey, the way you respond to things is somewhat alarming. Maybe that's the fruit that you need to investigate. Uh, Maybe it's anxiety or depression or impatience or comparison or overspending or overworking, or this is a big one for us, people pleasing. Right? Maybe it's reacting poorly to friends and family when you're in conversation with them or withdrawing from the people um, that you love. Or maybe it's not having any time with God. It, it can be a number of things, but I want you to ask yourself, what do I see in my life right now that is worthy of further examination? Because the first step to self-examination is just to identify the fruit in our lives. What is something, whether a behavior, an action, a feeling in my life right now that is worthy of further examination? I want to tell you a little bit, uh, give you a little example from my life. Um, For the past few weeks, I've had this anxiety that I just wake up with. And that's not uncommon for me, but um, recently it's just been hyped up a little bit more in my life. And so one morning I had this bout of anxiety and I thought, I'm not just going to pray that God would take this away. I actually want to pray and find out what the answer is for this. So we'll get to that in the next step. But I want you to see that for me, the anxiety that I experienced was the fruit in my life. And I didn't just want to deal with the fruit, but I wanted to get to the root issue, which leads us to our second question. What's the root? So first question, what's the fruit? What's something in my life that requires further examination? But secondly, what's the root issue here? And for me, as I took this anxiety to to God, and I didn't just want to leave it there and get on with my day and ask him to make it better. I actually wanted God to show me what's the root cause, what's happening under the surface of my life. And so when I asked God that, I just had this myriad of answers that were given to me through the Holy Spirit. Thankfully, we have the Spirit to help us on this journey. And so my anxiety was the fruit, but the root issue was actually a fear of losing people that I loved. It was a fear that I would lose control and a fear that I couldn't control the outcome. And so that was the the root issue that God began to show me is that I'm trying to control, that I really want to control things and I really want to avoid grief and avoid loss. And so that was the root issue that God began to show me. So I encourage you to ask yourself that question, to look at the fruit, but then to question what is the root? What is the root issue that's causing this fruit in my life? Um, There are some examples I want to share. So for First example, I have someone in my life who for a long time was addicted to alcohol. And that was the fruit issue of his life. But the root cause of that, um, I would imagine, actually had a lot to do with his childhood. It had a lot to do with his feelings of inadequacy, of not being enough, of not fitting in. And so he developed this addiction to alcohol in order to escape those negative feelings and emotions that he had in his life. So for him, the fruit might have been alcoholism, but the root issue was feeling like he wasn't enough. Uh, Maybe for you, if you're a people pleaser, uh, you know, we have so much inner inner turmoil at the thought of letting people down. And so that's the fruit. But where is that coming from? What's the root issue here? And perhaps the root issue is that you feel like your success in life depends on people's approval of you. Maybe the root issue is feeling really unloved and not accepted in life. And so that could be the root issue of your people-pleasing fruit. I hope you're getting the hang of it here with me. Third example I want to share is maybe you've had anger as you've reacted to your family in a, in a poor and negative way. And perhaps you just think, oh, I'm just stressed about COVID. But I encourage you, maybe if you 
searched for the root issue, you would see that you feel like you're losing control and you don't know how you're going to provide for your family. Maybe that's the root issue. Now, this is really hard to do. This is the hardest step in this three-step process um, that I'm giving you today. And this might require more time. You might not have an answer to what is the root issue within a few moments. Uh, it could be years of your life. You might have to see a counselor to go on this journey. But it can also happen quite quick. For example, when I found out I was in ISO isolation, I um, had a reaction that was quite interesting. And I'll spare you the details. I had this reaction that was quite interesting. And so I had to go on this journey quickly and pray with God of like, why do I feel like this? And God began to reveal to me the root issue um, was due to other things that had happened in the past. And so I just encourage you, this can be something that we do regularly throughout the day. You know, if your brother or your sister eats your food in your fridge and you just have this reaction, you can be like, God, that was the fruit, but what's the root? Oh, the root issue is I have an over-dependence on food. And by no means, church, am I saying that we analyze everything we're doing. I'm saying that self-examination provides us the opportunity to become more like Christ. So why wouldn't we want to ask ourselves these questions of our souls? All right, so what's the fruit? What's the root? And then the third, and I would say the most important part and the most, the best question to ask is, and what's the truth? Romans chapter 12, verse two says this, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. So we need to ask ourselves, what's the truth here? I've identified the root issue and what does the gospel say about this situation? When it came to the fruit of my anxiety, the root being a fear of loss and wanting to control things, the truth is God is in control. The truth is that God has numbered my days and the days of everyone who I love. And the truth is, is that God is a really good God who likes to give really good gifts and that mercy and goodness shall follow me all the days of my life. Now, I know that can sound somewhat cliche, but what other tool, what other weapon do we have than the Word of God for overcoming these root issues in our lives that are causing this bad fruit? The Word of God is like a sharp sword, right? And so we need to overcome the root issues with the truth. And so what is the truth here? Um, maybe if your fruit is an addiction to social media and the, the root issue is trying to seek approval from people, the truth that you need to tell yourself is that, man, you are loved, you are accepted, you are welcomed by God. And that if nobody else likes you on social media, you have the approval of God Almighty, right? That is an amazing truth to tell yourself. Um, if your fruit in life for these moments is outbursts of anger and poorly reacting to situations and the root issue is that you feel like you're losing control, then the truth that you've got to overcome that root with is that God is in control, that you can trust God with your life and with your whole family, that God is in control and he will provide for you. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Maybe the fruit is bitterness towards a boss or towards a spouse or towards a friend. And the root issue is that, that fear of rejection. Well, the truth that you need to tell yourself, my friends, is that you have been accepted and approved by God and that he will never leave you nor forsake you. He will never turn his back on you. And so we need to ask ourselves these questions when it comes to self-examination. What's the fruit that we can identify in our lives? These things that are cropping up on the surface that require further examination. And then what's the root? What's the root cause here? What's really going on under the surface? And then thirdly, and what's the truth? What does the gospel have to say about this situation that I'm facing right now in my life? I just want to share a Bible verse with you, which I think is so important as we go on this journey. Um, it's from Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23, and it says this, Guard your heart above all else, for it determines the course of your life. I want to read that again. Guard your heart, elevation, above all else, for it determines the course of your life. And can I just say we live in a society that is not conducive to interior examination. Heck, I live on the Gold Coast and I just have to take a five minute walk along Burley to recognize, man, the society and the culture I live in is so obsessed 
with what's happening in the external world. We are so exterior focused and we, we worry about, um, you know, what clothes we're wearing, how plump our face is, um, what car we're driving, how many friends we have on social media, who we're hanging out with on the weekend and what holidays we're taking or not taking because of the current climate. But we worry about all these external things. We're obsessed with superficiality, but we see that the God in the Bible is a God who is very different to what we find on Burley Beach. The God of the Bible is a God who is concerned with your heart, with your interior life. And so as Christians living a deeply formed life, we've got to go on this journey of interior examination, of self-examination. Um, Matthew 5 verse 8 says this, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. That's Jesus talking. He's saying, think about what's happening on the inside. And then in 1 Peter chapter 3, this is my final verse, verse 3 to 4, it says this, Don't be concerned about the outward beauty of fancy hairstyles, expensive jewelry, or beautiful clothes. You should clothe yourselves instead with the beauty that comes from within, the unfading beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is so precious to God. Let's be people who look countercultural from the world that is all around us, a world that focuses on the 10% of the iceberg that's above the surface to the, the neglect of the 90% that's the interior world. Let's be people who are concerned with the heart, knowing that out of, the heart, out of our hearts, everything else flows. And so let me leave you with, um, with a quote from Charles Spurgeon. Uh, he says this, as was the city, such were her armies. As was her inward strength, such were they that came from her. I might then urge the necessity of keeping the heart, because it is the metropolis of our manhood, the citadel and armory of our humanity. From mark you, a man's force in the world, other things being equal, is just in the ratio of the force and strength of his heart. A full-hearted man is always a powerful man. So as we journey down this road of living a deeply formed life in 2022, we've got to recognize that self-examination, looking inward at ourselves, not for the sake of just looking inward, but for the sake of becoming more like Christ, it requires to ask three important questions. What is the fruit? What is the root? And what is the truth? I pray that God blesses you all this year um, in 2022. And may the greatest adventure you go on this year be the adventure into your own heart. And thankfully, by the gospel, um, God guides us on that journey that in Christ we are accepted, we are loved, we are approved of, and we are welcomed into God's presence. So if you want a relationship with Jesus, um, you don't yet have one and you want to begin that journey, I encourage you to click on the link that's in the description of this video because the team at Elevation would love to go on that journey with you. Let me pray for us before we finish up. Father, thank you for the truth today that you care so much about what is happening um, on the inside of us not just what's happening externally and providing for our needs you love doing those things but all that we are our whole life flows out of our heart and so i pray that by your holy spirit that you would guide us in this journey of interior examination and that by looking inward at our hearts we may become more like christ i thank you father for this word today i pray that your holy spirit would completely cover and saturate every person who's listening um, to this message today every person in our church community i pray would feel the presence of god today so thank you for this wonderful year this opportunity that you've given us to become a people who look more and more like jesus have your way in and through our lives and may all the glory be to your name in jesus wonderful name we pray amen <laughs>